Hey there guys, this is going to be my Wrestlemania review. Yes, that's right, I've just finished watching the pre-show, sorry, the post-show. Um, one match didn't happen though, I don't know where it disappeared to and that was the mixed match with the Funkadactyls and Tons of Funk and, and Team Road Scholars. So that was quite weird how that match didn't happen, or at least I don't think it happened, I didn't see it. Um, <coughs> it's four in the morning where I am, so... I'm keeping my voice down a little bit because my, you know. So we started with the pre show, and this was uh, The Miz versus Wade Barrett. An awesome start to the night. Um, I actually did quite well with my predictions, um, I thought. I got nine, sorry, not nine, I got six out of nine right, so. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. You know, could be worse. But anyway. <coughs> so this match went to and fro a little bit. Um, but ultimately, WWE needed to start the night big, um, and with the title change, they did it very well, I thought. <laughs> it was definitely a very good match. Um, then we had the main show, and this actual, uh, this actual pay-per-view started with Sheamus, Big Show and Randy Orton versus The Shield, which shocked me a little bit, because I thought that would come later on. But that, that didn't, didn't seem to matter anyway, because it was a... But it was actually a very good match. Um, though it was obvious that the Shield would keep a rocking and continue their own little streak of winning their matches. Um, after the big after the big show, after the loss uh, for the All Stars, uh, the big show would KO would KO Orton and Sheamus and walked out of the ring, leaving his teammates in the middle of the ring um, after the match, knocked out. Um, it was a good show opener. Uh, good match, there was nothing really, really wrong. And then came the disappointment of the night for me. It was really shocking. It was the Ryback versus Mark Henry match. And this match was actually my one that I was looking forward to. I was really looking forward to this match. I was really, really, really wanting this match to be good. You know, and uh, sadly it wasn't. And it actually disgusted me. To be perfectly honest, every pay per view, um, including WrestleMania, has screwed Ryback. You know, either you know the referee last year, the Shield. Um, every pay per view has just kind of screwed um, Ryback, and this was no different. Uh, I was really hoping that you know Ryback would get a win at, Re at WrestleMania at the pay per view. Sadly, he didn't. Mark Henry won. Um, and I really want Ryback to start getting wins because his momentum keeps getting stopped. He does well in in, in Raws, he does well in SmackDown, he does well in main events. But this this pay per view thing, he just cannot seem to get a win at, at, at a pay per view. So here's hoping for Extreme Rules. Um, but Mark Henry won and uh, climbed out the ring, and then he thought again and went back into the ring to give Ryback a world strongest slam to put him into the Hall of Pain. Ryback jumped up on his feet and um, delivered a shell shock onto Mark Henry and um, <laughs> this was just a weird match for me. Um, so Ryback delivered a shell shock. Um, I really wanted him to get a pay per view win but sadly it wasn't to be. <sighs> then we had uh, Big E and Dolph versus Team Elno. I predicted a Big E and Dolph win, and I'm happy I was wrong on this one. Um, I wanted Hell No to win, but I just had a really bad feeling about them, because they've had the belts for such a long time, but they actually kept the belts. Um, it was an amazing match, um, and the end was a good choke slam, and a flying goat sealed it for uh, Team No. Um, got up on 2-3, and they retained. So that was a nice, lovely uh, win. And then we had another match which I wasn't very pleased with. It was Fandango away versus Y2J. When Y2J uh, got kicked in the head for the first time, this was a bad match technically. Um, you know, um, the way it was done, the way the uh, the way it was choreographed. Because obviously we know wrestling's meh. <laughs> That's my way of saying fake. But you know, it's all written. It's all planned out. Um, but the choreographing was 
absolutely abysmal. And it wasn't Y2J's fault on this one, it was Fandango away. Um, I actually heard the ref at one point say to Fandango, cover, you know, go for a cover. You know, and it was just shockingly bad. Fandango won, but I'm not going to waste any more time on that match because it was just, it was terrible. Um, not as bad, it wasn't as bad though as uh, the disgust, disgusting match of Ryback, if I'm honest. We then had Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger for the World Heavyweight title. Um, remember, we, we could have saw someone cashing the their, their um, money in the bank contract, um, but I didn't think I didn't think at what at any moment it would happen. I did mention it on the prediction video, but I, on later thinking, I just thought, nah, it's not going to happen. Alberto's going to win it, and it would be a bad time for. Um, pardon me, it would be a bad time for. Um, what's his name? Dolph Ziggler to strike. So I didn't think about anything about that. Alberto got the one, uh, got the one, got the win. Uh, which, in my prediction videos, I did say that WWE kind of can in that storyline with with Jack Swagger with the whole racist thing, and so I was kind of it was kind of obvious that Alberto was going to win. And then we got to our main events, <laughs> and the first main event was Undertaker vs Punk. This match, <laughs> this match had my heart racing all the way through. <laughs> My heart was literally jumping out my chest and it lasted for something like 20 minutes or so. Um, I actually thought at one point I was having a heart attack <laughs> because my heart was beating so fast. Every moment, it was just insane. You know, Punk would be almost certainly winning, then Undertaker would be almost certainly winning, then Punk would be winning again. It just literally bounced from side to side. Um, when uh, Punk kicked out of the, two, uh, out of the first tombstone, um, I was just gobsmacked. You know, my heart literally exploded. <laughs> well, not literally, but my heart. I thought I was having a heart attack at that moment. Um, and, at the, and the second tombstone, you know, at the end of the match, I, I needed a cigarette. And I don't even smoke. So, <laughs> Punk is the one. He, he is right, Punk is the one in 21. 21 and 0. The Undertaker who got a win with a second tombstone. Um, it was an absolute phenom, <laughs> phenomenal match. See what I did there? I ain't even going to try to get across the, from my eyes to you. Um, I'm sure a video will be on YouTube of the match in about five minutes, <laughs> if it's not already. It was a phenomenal, it was absolutely a brilliant match, best night of the night, Be best night of the night, best match of the night, guaranteed. Um, we then saw Triple H with HBK versus, uh, you know, in this corner with uh, Brock Lesnar versus, Brock Lesnar with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Words are not my forte at the moment. We then saw, I'll try it again, we then saw Triple H with HBK in his corner and Brock Lesnar with Paul Heyman in his corner. Another epic match, not as good as Taker, but a good one again. Triple H won his uh, won his career continues, and it gives a second loss to Paul Heyman. Um, so Paul Heyman and Co had another loss of the night. Seriously though, this match was good, not as good as Taker, but it was good nonetheless. And lastly, lastly we had The Rock versus Cena. Now. Cena won, and this match was by far not the uh, not even close to Taker or Triple H's match. Uh, but Cena won. There's two reasons. Well, I say actually three reasons that Cena won, and I knew Cena would win. Rock won it last year, so it kind of balances it balances it out. Now we won a piece, so that means the Rock's probably going to come back next year. So get ready for that, guys. Um, Number two is The Rock is a part-timer and so can't keep the belt past Mania. There was just no doubt that Cena would win in that respect. And three, I don't know if anyone else spotted this, but when Rock gave the title to the ref at the beginning of the match, he had a look like he wondered if he will ever get to hold it again somewhere down the road. Like he knew he would be losing it, and obviously he did. Um, but he knew that, no, he's not going to get to have that back at the end of the match. 
and so I pretty much knew at that point, you know, yeah, Cena's going to get it here. Um, but it was a good match. Um, the best matches, I would say, were, um, in my personal opinion, were Undertaker versus Punk, followed by Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. And then the third one, I would say, was actually the pre-show with The Miz and Wayne Barrett. Um, followed by The Rock versus Cena. Um, and then by process of elimination, I'd go uh, Big E and Dolph versus Hell No. Then Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger. Um, then Sheamus and the, um, that match. Uh, and then I'd probably have to go with Mark Henry versus Ryback, leaving Fandango and Y2J last. It was a terrible match, that. It was the worst one. And so we had. So just to recap, the worst match was Fandango versus Y2J. The best match was Punk versus. The Undertaker 21 and 0. And on that note, I'll see you next time.